Okay, today I'm going to review Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom. Paths, Dangers, Strategies. So this was a really influential book about AI. I think it came out in 2014. Let me double check. Yeah, it came out in 2014. It was pretty influential. It was one of the first really big detailed books on AI to hit the market, uh, at least in the general audience. And it had a pretty big impact um, at the time. And it still does today, I think. The author, Nick Bostrom, his background is in philosophy. I think he's a professor. Um, he also, he wrote this article a while ago called, Are We Living in a Simulation? And it really popularized the simulation theory which I've done a video on. Um, you can check that out on my channel. But he really popularized that theory a while ago, and now he's moved on to AI and the dangers of AI and superintelligence. This was a really dense book. I mean, it's really, it was a really tough read. It's not a fun read, um, unfortunately. It's very detailed, and too detailed, I think. AI is such a, it's such an unknown topic. Nobody knows how it's exactly going to happen because we've never built an AI before. So no one knows exactly how that AI will act, how it will think, how easy will it be to manage, how easy will it be to implement goals, how, you know, we just don't know anything about how it's all going to happen. And we knew less in 2014. Since in 2014, nobody else is really looking at the topic yet. So, how do you write a detailed, dense book about something that's pretty unknown? Well, the way Bostrom does it is he just looks at every possibility and he, then he goes through in very detailed, very explicit ways and thinks through every possible scenario and then what the dangers will be in that scenario. And... This might seem fun on the surface, at least it seems fun to me, uh, seem interesting to me. But when you start reading it, it just it's not. It, it's just dense and it's so in the weeds that you never get any real perspective or insight. Because there's no insight to be had because no one knows what the insight is because AI is not here yet. So we're just guessing and Bostrom just has a very detailed textbook-like way of guessing about what's going to happen in the future. And I don't really think it's worth it. So much of the book could potentially be pointless if the reality of AI is a little different. For instance, Bostrom goes into a few topics in the book um, and spent a lot of time in it. One is goals and how do we align an AI's goals with our own goals. And he goes through and spends a lot of time talking about all the ways in which they could converge how we might think we have it solved and how they might still be wrong in the long run. It's just a lot of stuff like that. And if the reality of AI is different, if it turns out that that's not a hard problem to solve, then a huge chunk of this book becomes completely irrelevant. And most of this book is focused on things that are really far out. It's not AI version one. This is the dangers that AI presents in the long term. So he's really going even beyond the uncertainty of the initial version of AI. He's going to the far out version of AI where it's even more uncertain. And he still spends a ton of time going into all these details in the weeds. And it just, it doesn't come together for me. It, it seems like he wrote a book geared towards someone who doesn't want to believe that AI could be dangerous. And then he just goes through explicitly covering every different possibility and showing the dangers there. Like he's trying to convince this person that there is danger in AI. And if you're coming into the book already assuming that AI could be dangerous, then there really is nothing in the book that is of interest to you because this book is just a long argument saying AI could be dangerous. Like that's the only real takeaway from this book is AI could be dangerous, we should take it seriously, we should put work into thinking about it before it comes around. And if you're already there, then there's no additional insights. 
because this is really just a bunch of thought experiments. I mean, Bostrom doesn't have a technical background. There's no details about how AI could happen. It's this very like far out, broad philosophical perspective. And he's taking this like logical argument and just figuring and just deducing all the dangers that could be presented by AI. And it's, it's very disconnected from uh, the technical reality of artificial intelligence or expert systems or any kind of uh, computer intelligences that could come about. It's really unclear why you would read this book if, if you already think AI could be dangerous. And I'm not sure there's a good reason. In addition to the, the density of the book and the limited use cases for reading the book, I think the book has a, a, a clear bias in it towards danger. Now it does say danger right there in the title. So it is a focus of the book. So maybe I'll give him a little bit of a pass um, for that. But it's clear that he thinks AI is this kind of boogeyman that's out there that could come after us. And he does, in the book, he talks about how it's neutral, how, you know, he makes a showing of, of having a perspective that AI could be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be antagonistic or be, by, like, ha have any kind of evolutionary um, motivations of survival, you know, things like that. But right away when you start the book, he starts with his intro. And this intro is a, and let me find it. And he has this intro, and the intro, it's even, so here's the preface. Here's the preface. It's one page before the preface. He has this, uh, this intro section, the unfinished fable of the sparrows. And it's this little literary tidbit about sparrows that try to raise uh, an owl and tame the owl and how there's some kind of danger in this that they, uh, they're convincing themselves that the owl is not dangerous when really they're ignoring the fact that it's an owl and it's a natural predator that could attack them. And that's the very start of the book. That's even before the preface of the book. So it's clear from, from the first page of the book, right after the copyright, it immediately sets a tone of AI is a predator, is dangerous, we should be wary. It, it just comes across as biased towards that perspective right from the beginning. There's not a lot of time spent talking about how AI could help us, how it could save us, how it could be really beneficial. Not a lot has gone into how we can use AI to defeat other AIs, like we use good safety-oriented AIs to defeat malicious, violent AI systems. It's really just this very broad AI is this boogeyman predator and it's coming at and it could come after us, I guess, is more accurate, but it definitely seemed biased to me from the beginning. And so, you know, I have a hard time figuring out why I would recommend this book to someone because I didn't enjoy it. It's one of my favorite topics and I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was dry and dense, and I have a degree in accounting. I can do dry and tedious and dense, but I want some reason to do it. I need a payoff, you know, something that I get out of putting in the effort to slog through that. And I don't think this book really has it. It's really, it's a simple takeaway. And I, I don't know why you would package a simple takeaway in this like dense, complex, hard to read package. And this isn't just my opinion. It's not just other reviewers' opinions. Bostrom knew that this was the case and he was proud of it. I'll show you on the back of this book, in the comments about the book, the very last comment, see if I can focus that. It says, a damn hard read. A Damn Hard Read by the Sunday Telegraph. So they put on the cover of the book that it's a damn hard read. And I'm sorry, but if you give me a damn hard read, I want a damn good reason to read it. And this book just doesn't have that for me. Even though it's a favorite subject of mine, 
even though I wanted to like it. I mean, it has such a big cultural impact. The people, I mean, it's got a comment from Bill Gates on the front. Max Tegmark, I loved his book. He's got something nice to say about it. Elon Musk is on here. I mean, there's a lot of people that put their support behind this book. And I think that it got an overly generous review because it was one of the first big books on the scene and there's a lot of people that wanted this topic to become mainstream and when this book came about and it looked like it was going to go mainstream I mean it was a New York Times bestseller so the book did go mainstream um, I think a lot of people just really wanted to push the topic into the kind of cultural zeitgeist and I think that's why a lot of people have a had a biased view of it and when the first time I read it, I didn't have such a negative opinion of it. Uh, I read this book a couple years ago, the first time. Then I read a lot more books on the topic and I uh, thought a lot more about it. I had I gained more perspective on the content available. And then I went back recently and reread the book for the review. And in that reread, I really saw a lot of things that I missed the first time. The payoff for what you put into this book just isn't worth it for me. So. I wouldn't recommend you read this book unless you really, really want to read about this, you know, philosophical dangers of AI and superintelligence, and you're really going to put the time in to slog through it because it is a dense, hard read. That that description is very accurate for what this book is, and in my opinion, the takeaway is very simple, very clear, and just doesn't require the this textbook to get the takeaway. I mean, most of the people that probably will read this book are, will probably start reading it already believing that AI will be dangerous. So I don't, I don't know what the use case is for the book. I mean, it's nonfiction, it's dense, it's technical. You should learn something from it. That's why I read these types of books. And this book just didn't have that for me. It's unfortunate though, it's it's a huge, it's a hugely influential book in the AI um, kind of genre, but I think it served its purpose. I think it brought AI dangers into, into the popular uh, kind of culture, and then other people took it and ran with it. I mean, Max Tegmark, Elon Musk, other guys are getting involved. They're putting in money and effort to, to look at the safety aspect of AI. So I think the book did what it was supposed to do. It made the argument that AI is dangerous. People accepted that argument and they ran with it. And now the book doesn't have the same purpose in it because it made the argument and people accepted it and moved on. To go back now and read this book and put the effort in to read it um, I just don't think it's worth it in today, in today's environment. Um, so I hope you like this video. I'm sorry if you wanted to like this book and you didn't want to hear a bad opinion about it. Uh, so like, subscribe, stick around. I've got some more book reviews coming. Some really interesting books in the future. So stick around uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video.